Right, the second uh, type of uh, transformation we're going to look at is the uh, concept of reflection. And let's uh, start off with what should we have this time as our function? We won't quite have x squared. Let's have function x equals x squared plus 1. Amazingly different to the last one, but never mind. <laughs> OK, and what does that look like? It looks like this. Now, you have to know about two types of reflection. What can we say about negative f of x? Well, that will be minus x squared minus 1. What does that graph look like? Well, it's certainly going to go through negative 1. That, by the way, is positive 1. And because it's negative x squared, we know it's an upside down parabola. So we know it's going to do that. Well, that's easy, isn't it? That's done. Done and dusted. That means reflection in the x-axis. So negative fx is reflection in the x-axis. What about reflection in the y-axis? I need to be a bit careful with this as an example because, of course, if I reflect uh, that one, it's going to stay the same. So that wouldn't be a very good example to look at. So let's try, um, let's try a straight line. So we'll have uh, f of x equals 3x plus 1. So that goes through 1. Well, if I reflect that line, then it's going to do that. So it's still going to go through 1, but the gradient is now in the opposite direction, but the same degree of steepness. In other words, it'll be negative 3. So we are interested in ending up with negative 3x plus 1. How can we do that? Well, quite simply, if I find function negative x, then that me means replace x with whatever is in here. So replace x with minus x. So you get 3 times minus x plus 1, which is minus 3x plus 1, which is the required answer. So I've done it, haven't I? So let's, again, let's keep this nice and separate. So function negative x is reflection in the y-axis. I think this one is possibly forgotten more than than some of them. So negative function x is reflection in the x-axis. Function negative x is reflection in the y-axis. OK, so be careful not to confuse those. Um, I think it's quite easy to confuse them because people certainly do. So just try and learn them. So let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own. So I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself. But what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.